All right, in this video, we are going to learn how to differentiate with limits. Remember, differentiation is the process of taking a function and finding its derivative, which is a formula to find the slope of a tangent line at any given point on that function. So how do we do that? Well, again, I literally cannot say this enough times. A derivative is a formula to find the slope of the tangent line at any given point on the function f of x. The process of doing this is called differentiation. And it's not an easy process. And I'm going to be honest with you, there are actually multiple ways to do it. But the way that I'm going to teach you in this video is to use limits. So you're going to need limits and some good algebra skills. All right, so to find f prime of x, the derivative, to find y prime, the derivative, to find dy over dx, another way of saying the derivative, to find a formula for the slope of a tangent line at any given point on the function, that is the derivative, you need to use this limit idea. We're going to find the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. Now, if you're like, where did that formula come from? You need to watch my other video on the tangent line problem because that'll explain exactly where that formula comes from. So we're going to use this formula, this limit idea, to help us differentiate, find the derivative. All right, so here's our first problem. We got a function. Now, what's a function do? A function takes x and it gives you y. Well, we want to create a formula to take x and give us the slope of a tangent line at any given point on that function. <sighs> okay, how do we do it? Well, we're going to need our formula. To find the derivative, we need the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. And if you, I seriously can tell you, watch my video over how, uh, the, over the tangent line problem if you want to know where this formula came from. All right, but now I got to use it. So first thing I got to do is I got to plug in x plus h to my function. So I get 4 times x plus h squared minus 5 times x plus h minus my function. Now, my function is a binomial, so I am going to need some parentheses here because I'm not just subtracting one thing, I'm subtracting an entire function, so that negative is going to need to be ran behind there. And I'm going to divide everything by h. Now, the trick to this is always get this h to cancel with a factor h in the numerator. If I can make that happen, Boy, oh boy, I can have my derivative pretty easily. All right, so here I go. I got a lot of algebra to do right now. First, x plus h squared. I already know that's x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. So now I just got to distribute a 4 throughout that. So I get 4x squared plus 8xh plus 4h squared. Now I got to distribute my negative 5. So I get negative 5x, negative 5h. And then I got to distribute 9 negative in the back there. Negative 4x squared, positive 5x. All divided by h. All right. Now, again, got to get that h to cancel. But to get that h to cancel, I need a factor. So let's see. 4x squared, negative 4x squared. Whew. Dust in the wind. They're gone. They make a 0. Negative 5x, positive 5x, dust in the wind. So after all that dust settles, I'm left with an 8 xh plus 4h squared minus 5h all divided by h. Now, I still can't get these h's to cancel until I have a factor. So why don't we factor? Factor out an h on top, and I'm left with 8x plus 4h minus 5 all divided by h. So now that h will cancel, and now I'm ready to find the limit as h approaches 0 of 8x plus 4h minus 5. Now, I started with this, and through a whole bunch of really solid algebra, I was able to get this. And that's why I'm now ready to plug in 0 for h to get my limit. And if I plug in 0 for h, I get 8x plus 4 times 0 minus 5, and well, 4 times 0 is nothing, so my final answer is 8x minus 5. So that means the derivative, f prime of x, of my function is 8x minus 5. Final answer. So 
you know, what is a function for? A function finds y. You plug in x, you get y. A derivative, you plug in x, and you get the slope of the tangent line at any given point on that function. So, pretty cool process. All of that process is called differentiation, and the final result is the derivative. Let's do another one. All right, another function this time, same formula. The limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. All right, now I just got to actually apply this. I'm going to plug in x plus h, and I get the square root of x plus h minus 4 minus f of x, which is the square root of x minus 4, all divided by h. Please don't distribute this negative sign. You cannot distribute a negative sign into a square root. <sighs> okay, well, I need this h right here to cancel somehow. Well, the only way it's going to cancel is if I can get a factor. Boy, oh boy, what do I do? Well, I'm going to use a process that is called multiplying by the conjugate. This will get rid of the square roots in the numerator. This is rationalizing the numerator. Now, how do I do that? Well, I'm going to multiply the numerator by the conjugate of my other numerator. So I'm going to multiply by the square root of x plus h minus 4 plus the square root of x minus 4. That's a conjugate. But I can't multiply the numerator unless I also multiply the denominator. So there it is. So essentially I'm multiplying by 1, which is why I'm really not changing my function. I'm just kind of changing how it looks. All right, so what happens when I do this? Well, on top, when I FOIL, when I multiply these two first things together, well, square roots cancel, x plus h minus 4. Life is great. Now, what about the outside and insides? The outside is going to be the square root of x plus h minus 4 times the square root of x minus 4. And those square roots are not going to cancel because they're different. But when I multiply the insides, I'm going to get the exact same thing, but negative. I'm going to get the square root of x plus h minus 4 times the square root of x minus 4, but negative, which means they're going to cancel. And that's the whole reason why I multiplied by the conjugate is because it guarantees those outside inside terms to cancel. So there's only one more thing I have left to worry about, and that is the, the square root of x minus 4 times the square root of x minus 4. Now, be very careful. This is a red alert for a major misstep here. The square root of x minus 4 times the square root of x minus 4 is x minus 4. Square roots cancel. But there's a negative. It's a negative. So the negative will then have to get distributed. So it's negative x plus 4. All divided by h. So please be very, very careful when you multiply those. Yes, the square root cancels. But then this negative sign right here is going to jump in like a wild dog and just attack and make it a negative x plus 4. All right. So, wow, that cleaned up really nice. Now, don't forget about the bottom. A lot of kids multiply the top and they forget about the bottom. On the bottom I have h times the square root of x plus h minus 4 plus the square root of x minus 4. Now, don't do anything to that bottom. Don't distribute the h. Because remember, I want that h to cancel, so I want it left there. But I do have kind of an ugly denominator. But don't worry about it. It'll work out. First off, the x and the negative x cancels. Dust in the wind. Negative 4 plus 4, gone. Zero. So all that's left after all that dust settles is an h divided by an h. Ha-ha, something's going to happen there in one second. Times the square root of x plus h minus 4 plus the square root of x minus 4. Now, those h's are factors that will finally cancel. Awesome. Very happy. So what is left? Well, now that it's finally kind of cleaned up, I could go ahead and apply my limit. And I have 1 all divided by the square root of x plus h minus 4 plus the square root of x minus 4. All right, so again, all of this through a bunch of algebra, a bunch of good algebra, reduced to nothing but that. And now I'm ready to plug 0 in to find my limit. And when I plug 0 in, I get the square root of x minus 4 plus the square root of x minus 4. Because when you plug in a 0 right there for h, you just get x minus 4. So um, what happens when you take the square root of x minus 4 plus the square root of x minus 4? You get 1 over 2 times the square root of x minus 4. So there is my final derivative. So I'm going to scroll down a teeny bit here. So the derivative of my function f prime of x is 1 divided by 2 times the square root of x minus 4. Easy, 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 easy. 
That is the derivative of my function. All right, let's dive right into a third and final example here. All right, this time I have a function, g of x. Who cares what it's called? g of x, don't matter. Well, to find the derivative, a formula for the slope of a tangent line at any given point on the function, I need my limit. The limit as h approaches 0 of 2, whoa, 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 wait a minute, sorry, sorry, sorry. Got a little out of myself. The formula is f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Now, technically, I guess I should be using g's there because this is the function g, but come on, does that really matter that much? No. All right, so now first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in x plus h. That gives me 2 over x plus h plus 6 minus the function f of x, 2 over x plus 6, um, divided by h. Oh, I wrote a 6. Got a 6 on my mind, and I wrote a 6. Hey, that happens. Just, you know, correct your mistakes. All right, so again, a lot of kids struggle with these ones. These ones actually work out really, really nice. All right, first is I hate double fractions, so leave the numerator alone. Don't do anything to that numerator. Leave it alone. I'm going to do something with it in a minute, but right now, leave it alone. And instead of dividing it all by h, I'm going to multiply by 1 over h. Now, it's the same thing, right? Mathematically, that's equivalent, but this does get rid of this whole double fraction crap. Now, again, a lot of kids, the first thing you want to do is they want to distribute the 1 over h. Don't do that. That is going to make the problem harder. I want to make the problem easier. So what I want to do is I'm going to start inside the parentheses, and I'm going to get a common denominator. Common denominator is just multiplying the two denominators you have together. Don't actually multiply them, just write them next to each other. Just multiply them without multiplying them. Now, this guy here, he already has the x plus h plus 6, so I need to multiply him top and bottom by x plus 6. That will give me my common denominator, and I'm going to get 2x plus 12. All right, the back guy has the x plus 6. He needs the x plus h plus 6. No big deal. I will get my common denominator if I multiply the bottom by that, but i got to multiply top. Please be very careful because this negative goes with that 2. So it's negative 2x, negative 2h, negative 12. All times 1 over h. Don't forget about that, right? Sometimes we get lost. We do so much work, we forget things. All right, I want this h to cancel, but I need a factor to do it. So 2x, negative... Whoa, sorry about that. Hold on. There we go. 2x, negative 2x, dust in the wind, 0, they're gone. 12, negative 12, dust in the wind, they're gone. All that's left is negative 2h, all divided by, and again, don't multiply. So many kids get tempted to multiply out this bottom, just leave it alone, times 1 over h. Now I have a factor, negative 2 times h, times h over here in the bottom, those factors can cancel. And now I'm ready to find my limit as h approaches 0. I got a negative 2 on top, and in my denominator I have an x plus h plus 6 times an x plus 6. Now again, all of this, I boiled down with a whole lot of good algebra to this. And now I'm going to plug in 0 for h to get my derivative. So I get negative 2 over x plus 6 times another x plus 6. So I get negative 2 over x plus 6 squared. Now, I would have no problem if you squared that and wrote x squared plus 12x plus 36. But honestly, when you use a derivative, it's easier if it's in this form because there's only one x. So if you tell me x is 7, I can plug in 7 really easily and get my answer. But if I have an x squared, and then I got a 12x, and then I got a 36, it just makes it a little bit harder. So I like to just leave it like that. It even looks a little prettier in my mind. All right, so what is the derivative? Now, wait a minute, I actually should use g, sorry. So g prime of x, the derivative of this function g, is negative 2 over x plus 6 squared. All right, now I'm going to say one more time. I've been saying it all video. What the heck is a derivative? What did I just find? I found a formula for the slope of a tangent line at any given point on the function g. Awesome. All right, guys, now what can you do with a derivative? Well, you could do a lot. So stay tuned to the next couple of videos that will go over what to do with a derivative once you have it.